Hi there, my name's Steve Backley. It is a pleasure to host this World Athletics podcast, a very special podcast. Uh, athletics has had five global championships in the last six years with athletes from four different continents taking those titles. Amazing to think the diversity is incredible. And we've got two of those champions uh, joining us today. We've got Niraj Chopra, the recently crowned Olympic champion, and Julius Yego, the world champion from 2015. Uh, look forward to spending some time talking everything javelin. First of all, uh, how are you and where are you? Julius, let's, let's start with you. How, how are you and where in the world are you? Thank you, Steve. Uh, I'm in Kenya at the moment, uh, in, in, in Eldred. That's, this is where I live. And, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, many a times I've been listening to you commenting on my performance, and uh, especially the Commonwealth record in Birmingham. It was really amazing. So good to see you strong because I've been watching your videos as well. So it's a big <laughs> pleasure and an honor. Oh, like, like, <laughs> likewise, Julius. And, uh, and welcome. Look forward to, to chatting everything javelin with you. And, uh, and Nirash, uh, congratulations on a, a great 2021. Uh, how are you? How's life? And uh, where in the world are you? Thank you, Steve, sir. I'm very good I, and I'm very happy with Javelin Legends today. So I am, I'm in Delhi now. So it's very good to see you all. Likewise, likewise. And uh, yeah, we look forward to delving into to, to Javelin, how life has changed being a champion of the sport uh, and so on. Uh, and maybe, you know, Julius, we'll, we'll start with you. Uh, that 2015 World Championships, the first Kenyan uh, athlete to take a, a world gold medal in a country that, uh, of course, you have your history in, in the distance running and, and uh, in particular. So wh how, how did that come about? Tell us a little bit. How did you come to be a javelin thrower in a country that is so renowned for, for distance running? Thank you, Steve. I think I've been asked that question almost a million times. Why is javelin? <laughs> because, <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> yeah, uh, Kenya is known for long distance running. And, uh, but you know what? Uh, this is the talent I have. Uh, it's a God given talent, and uh, I needed to do it. Uh, you know, the turning point was in 2004, the Athen Olympics, when uh, I watched uh, Andreas, who was by then a little boy. So he was winning uh, the Olympic Games, and uh, you know, he beat uh, the world record holder, Jan Selesny. And you know, I had that feeling that, yeah, I can do it as well. Uh, I was in high school uh, in uh, uh, Form 2 by then, and I built that interest. And that was the year I started now focusing on javelin in school. I had a long talk with our games teacher that uh, I needed to pursue javelin. And you know, he was so willing, and he bought me uh, the javelin, the, the polo javelin. Remember the orange ones? Yeah, of course. So that was my first javelin, yeah. So he bought me one, and yeah, I used it. And, and was it was it the Cinderella story that you had this old orange javelin and and it, you you threw it and it and it disappeared out the stadium and you never looked back, or, or was it more of a passion to want to to get it right? How did it work? Uh, it's it's a short story. Uh, I remember when I was in primary school, uh, my elder brother used to throw javelin as well, but then the wooden sticks. They didn't want me to be in that team because I was so young and so little and so short. So they said, ah, this one cannot beat anybody. So because I had that interest, you know, where, when they were throwing now from the, you know, from the throwing area, I will go to the further side of the stadium, of the field, that is, because it was an open field. So whoever throws that uh, stick, wherever that person, you know, where the javelin lands, me, I will that take that stick throw from the same point where the javelin hits and it will go further than where that guy was throwing from. So, and people were building interest, like how come the little boy can throw further than these other guys? So, <laughs> <laughs> so now I just turn to you and just hear uh, you know, your, your meteoric rise to Olympic champion from, uh, from, from that world junior record years ago. And, you know, never before an Indian javelin champion. How, how, how come you're the first? Uh, no, you're saying it's been quite a quite a journey over the last uh, five years since 2016. The World Junior Championships is special because that was the first time he was competing at the at, at such a huge stage, and and the fact that he was able to uh, throw 86 for eight uh, and set a junior world record uh, that really helped him, uh, you know, get the belief that he he can be amongst the best in the world. Uh, it was also unfortunate that he missed the Rio uh, deadline by 12 days, and it was something that he felt uh, very disappointed about. 
at that time but since he couldn't do anything about it he kind of focused all his energies on on doing well at the senior level making the transition to the senior level and with his eyes in tokyo um but yeah he kept himself positive he kept himself uh, fit and then he was very very keen on competing with some of the other uh, athletes he was going to face in tokyo before tokyo and he was lucky that just about a couple of months before tokyo uh, he was able to go to europe and 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 you know compete against the likes of wetter and all the uh, other top throwers uh, in europe and he feels that was really helpful in you know bringing him into that mind frame to be able to perform at his best uh, in tokyo and he considers that uh, a huge part of why he won at tokyo i understand the world junior was a big part of of uh, growing confidence but what before then there was presumably there was an inner belief that you could be one of the greatest ever javelin throwers olympic champion i mean it's an audacious dream where did that come from and 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 how did you manifest that um so he's saying that he didn't really have a particular belief really came from from day one so he he doesn't really know how he uh, where it came from but on the first day he was on the ground and he saw some of his seniors throwing the javelin and something about the way it flew and the flight of the javelin really caught his uh, caught his fancy and i think he was just attracted from to that from day one um and when he had to go uh, you know it left his hand and he, he just felt something he felt a oneness with the javelin at that time he didn't really think about you know becoming a professional athlete or an olympic champion he just really enjoyed doing it uh, and that's why he he got into it and growing up uh, you know that's when he saw your videos steve he saw videos of uh, of of jan zelesny of taro pitkamaki all the other javelin greats he always wanted to compete against the best and uh, i think that's what uh, he feels kept gave him that belief that he want, always wanted to compete with the best and to compete with the best he had to be the best and the challenge of coming off the back of uh, an amazing olympic games your social media has gone crazy over 5 million followers on instagram i saw you on the front of Vogue magazine doing the the in the model shoot it looked amazing your life looks like a the dream huh? how how are you managing to to work with that and and stay focused for next year it feels good it's also uh, very similar to what uh, julius did for kenya uh, you know back those many years back because india has not really had Uh, such an achievement uh, in athletics or in javelin uh, ever so it's been huge uh, it's been a very warm reception and of course india has a lot of people so the 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 following on social media has also been uh, quite high but my focus of course is uh, is very much uh, on next year um, i am getting back to training and my focus is really on the sport because that's what i believe um, my focus that's where i believe my focus should be and it it is a big year next year with the world championships uh, the commonwealth and asian games as well um so my i'm just waiting to get back uh, to full fitness and i'm going to be working on training with uh, that in mind and of course you mentioned the commonwealth games and you the, you, you both will compete there next year in- coming back to europe again uh, i think i like competing in europe and Hopefully I will beat Chopra then. <laughs> Because I'm now getting fit and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think Naresh? See you see you next year. <laughs> hope hope your hope your adductor is good now. Yeah, it's 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 good. You know you, you see I look fit than when we were in Tokyo in Tokyo. Yes, yes, you look very you look great. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much guys. I really appreciate your time. and as you say you know it's all about staying healthy and staying optimistic guys i got to say you are fantastic ambassadors for the for the event for the sport of athletics uh, you make me proud to say that i was once a javelin thrower so uh, thank you for that and thank you again for your time here with us today so uh, all the best for a, a successful winter training and for for everything the next year brings